Asato ma sab kamaya, tamaso ma jyotir kamaya, mrityar ma amritam kamaya, om shanti, shanti, shanti. Welcome back on the Thursday sessions preparing for the week ahead for the Sundays. You know, in, in most of the parts of the Upanishads, in the Vedantas, as you know, Upanishad is a part of the Vedanta. Generally, it is towards the end of the Vedanta. Not necessarily, but generally. And they always start with a salutation to the divinity. I experience it today that, you know, the difference between this, chanting it just like that, like what we do in the theistic religion in which we keep saying Krishna, Krishna, Krishna and Shiva, Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva. We just mechanically chant it without really understanding the meaning. And But when you truly understand the meaning and when you take it away in your journey, it is tremendously effective. So this chanting what we do right now to focusing the tickets from unreal to real. Feel it. Enjoy it. Travel. Do the journey. Take us from ignorance, darkness to light and wisdom. Take us from that fear of death to the immortality. So nice, no? So we will continue with the meditate better, meditate effectively more. And continues through the Sunday and often will keep on coming back to because eventually it is through the meditation in which we are going to get into that Sat, Chit, Ananda, which is us, in the reality, in the Advaita Vedanta, and in which if we have to take home one thing from the entire Advaita Vedanta, it is asanga aham, asanga aham, I am totally detached. And this nature of our inner nature in the meditation is actually the reflection of the inner nature which goes on to the external world. Once the effective consciousness, which is the influence of the consciousness to the mind, effectively changes the mind then the outside world, our behavior, our conduct, everything is coordinated beautifully to harmonious and peace and you live a wonderful life. It reminds me of a story of one of the very good businessmen and he had shifted his business towards Arab country and he naturally is picked up wealth, doing very good, like the typical Arab Emirates and sheikhs. So generally they have this Friday market and he's gone down to the market. Telling you how this thing reflects into the real world through the story. So he goes around and he's seeing little things. He just while he on, he had carried money too, and he suddenly found he had lots of camels in his own. But you know, just like in India, it is elephants and horses in the ancient time. And who's got how many elephants? That's how it is to be in in the Arab country. Who's got how many camel? Now this businessman, Indian businessman, was doing pretty good. He suddenly found camel seller. There is a magnificent looking joint camel and glowing really and standing majestically. He said, I must have this battle. So he went ahead, he had no plans to buy, but he went and bargained and bought the camel. And he came back home and he was very pleased and he was sitting down there and having his little pipe smoking and he told the servants, clean up the camel. And as the camel was being cleaned, they took off 
the saddle of the canal, you know, which lies on the back. And suddenly a nice little pouch fell down from the camel. So his eye shifted to that pouch and the servants picked it up and gave it to him. And as he opened it and he finds to his utter shock, it's filled with beautiful gems, diamonds and rubies and pearls. And he was really shocked. And the servants were all watching and they said, Sir, the camel has brought you great luck. You've already been blessed. The merchant, the Indian merchant kept on looking at it and reflecting. And then he mused with a smiling face. He said, he shook his head and he said, No, I cannot take it. This is obviously the seller by mistake has left it there. He is not sold the camel with the gem. I must go back and return it. Servant said, so what are you doing? It is yours and it's very expensive. He said, no, I cannot. He goes back to the camel seller and when he shows it, he said, you're missing something. And the moment seller sees it and he didn't even miss it. He didn't know it that he is missing. He didn't know he had left it in the camel, you know, the pouch of the camel saddle. And he, he opens it and he sees the gem and he said, my God. And he was so thankful. He was profusely thanking the businessman, the Indian businessman. And then the Arab Sheikh, he said, I'm very pleased with your honesty. May I request you to take one gem out of this bag, any one of your choice, whichever one. They're very expensive. They're very good. They're my treasure, but please take one. So the Indian businessman said, no, I can't take it. He said, no, please take it. You, this is yours. He said, no, I cannot take it. He said, no, you must. He said, actually speaking, I've already got two. The Arab businessman, Arab, the camel seller, he is now a little taken aback. So he counted the gems. He knew how many gems were there. And he found all of them are there. He now looked inquiringly, very puzzled at the businessman, Indian businessman. You said you've taken one, two. You've taken two. But where I find all of them? The Indian businessman smiles and he says, No, I'm an Indian yogi businessman. Without this yogi, I have one gem which this packet of gem is re-triggered for me to be instilled within me and awakened within me is the truth that is my very special gem the truth the purity and the second gem is my self-respect and integrity i cannot do wrong and the arab camel man was really shocked this is the power of the Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, where you say Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham. And this is what we chant during the meditation to remind ourselves. I often think about that young mother with the baby. Whole day she's carrying the baby, feeding the baby, whatever she's got, one part of her body is touching the baby. And yet at night when she goes off, Asanga Aham, without realizing, her hand falls off the baby and she is merrily sleeping. She doesn't say, my God, I'm getting detached from my baby. Her hand falls off. This is Asanga Aham, in which this veil of Sat, Chit, Ananda, Sat, existence. Chit is the consciousness and the Ananda, joy. It comes out into your life and makes your life blissful. You know this Asanga Aham, Asanga Aham, which I keep talking to you about. There is a, a beautiful <laughs> a verse from 
uh, Shankaracharya had written it and it is called Brahma Jnana Valimala. It is from there. And if the one takeaway in the entire Advaita Vedanta, entire journey is this, Asanga Aham. There is one very Syrian monk and one of his disciples is sharing that he changed my entire life. And this younger monk is, is very famous today in the world. He is Swami Sarva Priyananda. You must be following and hearing him quite often. I have been learning intensely from him. He's changed a lot of our lifestyle, the Vedantic way, the Vivekananda and the Vedanta Shankaracharya. All these understandings from all these great monks, Shankaracharya is one leading monk in that. He says he was his guru. And he said, one day I ask my guru, if I ask you, what is your spiritual practice? What's your essence of your practice? And he said, my guru told me, Asanga Aham. Now this how powerful is the Asanga Aham. You know, this, the, the Brahma Jnana Balibana, which I'm going to, I'm going to chant it to you. And it will be there with you. It is goes on like this. Asanga aham, asanga aham, asanga aham. Puna, 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 asanga aham. Again and again, I am detached. I am detached. I am detached. So then who am I? Sat Chidananda Rupaham. I am that pure existent. Sat, pure consciousness, pure ananda, sat chidananda rupoham, ahameva habakyanam. Sat chidananda rupoham, ahameva abkyam. This ahameva is I am. And this I am is through the meditation is to concentrate and focus in that I am. And when you do that, you realize I am operating with this body, with this mind, with this name, with the form, my appointment, my family, but I am detached because I am the existence, the consciousness. I am not the body and the mind. This awareness, when it comes to then you realize I am the perfect one and the existence absolute, existence alone. Existence is the veil of existence. Like imagine ocean of existence in which ocean of existence, there are waves and waves and I'm one of them. That's the feeling you get. And ahameva is I am. Focus on this word ahameva. Akyam. Akyam, it means I am without decay, without change. I am that consciousness which is ever present, always there. Body is changing. Mind is changing. Body is aging, decay, death. Remember Shankaracharya, Jayati, I'm born. Asti, I sustain. Vardhate, I grow from the baby stage. Then Viparik Nakshate, then start to gradually come to a middle age. Aparik Nakshate, start to decay, opposite, and then Nakshate. But that change is the body, it is not I. But notice what has happened is the moment we talk about Aham, I am. That ahameva, I immediately align myself with this body, this body. And that is the cause of the disturbance to the meditation, distraction to the mind, disturbing to the mind. The body will affect the mind. The mind will affect the body. When you're upset, you will find you will not feel like eating. And <laughs> when your body is sick, also your mind will not feel like, you know, going ahead and doing something. Uh, peaceful. It's disturbed. In Upanishad, it goes ahead in the words of says, 
that that ahameva when i shine the whole world shines the universe the world shines forth because i shine i am that light ahameva this is what you and i need to understand towards meditate better meditate more effectively understand it you know the difference between that theistic religion where you have to have faith either faith in the book or faith in the teacher's word and faith in the people who say i have gone there so you follow it but advaita vedanta vivekananda paramahamsa yogananda especially paramahamsa ramakrishna and vivekananda goes ahead and says now religion has to be experienced when you experience you are an advaita vedantist you say let me taste it see it real it and do as that the moment you start to realize i am not and i realize i am not my mind and body you are already as per ashtavakra bhagavad ashtavakra gita the moment you realize i am the consciousness and start to begin the journey that i am not this body and the mind you are already jivan mukta in the words of upanishad it goes on to say tameva vantam anubhati sarvam tameva vantam when you are shining anubhati sarvam the whole world shine this thing we have talked about it before if i am in coma i am an unconscious i am not shining so when tameva vantam when i am shining make it i am conscious then anubhati sarvam the whole world shine and tasya bhata sarvam idam vibhati because you're shining everything else then shine that shines everything is shining by its light and this is where is asanga aham asanga aham and detachment towards your meditation you practice we do that before going into the meditation after you do the kriya yoga you say this chant the word visualize the picture see some tremendous vast blue sky or infinite ocean or infinite you and in which you are that infinity and i am detached i am like the sunlight i am like that consciousness light i'm lighting everything up but i'm detached like the sunlight falling on some dirty something on the road doesn't get affected falling on some pitcher of wine whiskey doesn't get drunk falling on some holy water it doesn't become holy it is detached and because it is detached it is always holy this i am that integrated into this inner world which in turn represents the outer world we make mistakes in our life there is a let me tell you today ended with another story there is this carpenter who was a very knowledgeable very dedicated carpenter and a businessman who had several carpenters this was the head of the carpenter he earned very well and he lived very well and the owner businessman was very pleased and all his life the carpenter served created furniture up to furniture houses up to houses and then one day the carpenter came down to the business man and said sire i have served you with all my life with all my heart with my all my consciousness now i wish to retire i don't wish to continue working i have enough i wish to live with my wife and family peacefully i don't wish to work anymore so the businessman he said he is the head of my carpenter team and if he goes away i have a big loss but still he was a very good person good businessman he said all right you do that but i have one last request for you and the businessman was very good to the carpenter carpenter naturally was indebted to him he said yes sir tell me will you do one last thing for me he said yes he said build one last house carpenter agreed he said okay that's my last house 
and this carpenter because it is his last house and he doesn't continue to work it somehow his mind was not focused and he continued to work he did the house pretty well because it was a very good carpenter he cannot do bad things but he didn't do it the way the perfect way he used to do it earlier and he completed it and it took him almost two months 60 days of additional and then he came and he said sire to the businessman your house is ready my last work is finished and now please give me your blessing i would like to retire so the businessman a hearty good businessman he gave him a big hug and he said i'm so pleased with your service and then he took the key and he said i'm so happy with you this is your house imagine the shock of the carpenter say what this is my house and then the carpenter started thinking i wish i knew it could to give me this house i would have made it with all my skill where here i have done 50 60% of the skill i want you to realize tame bhavantam sarvam idam vibhati you when you shine the whole world shine anubhati sarvam everything shine you are making your life through the meditation you're building your inner world which in turn gets reflected to the outside world and your world becomes peaceful happy calm just because you're building your inner world build your inner world today you're going to live in that house and you're living in that house in every day we are that purnam we have to realize that purnam we are not this body not the mind and we will talk a little more about this how are we not body and mind we've talked about it many a time we'll keep on repeating remember asanga aham purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 jai guru